Hi, and welcome to Simple Spirituality PH. Now, for those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Regine. I am an intuitive, manifesting-based tarot reader. I'm a Reiki healer and an overall light waker. And before we dive into today's episode, I would like to invite everyone who would like to receive notifications of my new videos to please hit the subscribe button over there. If you like this video later on, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or suggestions you want to say hey, just comment down below. And if you would like your very own tarot reading and Reiki healing session um, or Reiki healing session with me online for now, here are the details. Alrighty, so let's get to the meat of the video. Now, I apologize for the lighting because I decided, I don't know why, but I decided to do it um, late in the afternoon and the lighting is really, really terrible and the dogs are barking, but hey, we're going to shoot this video. So this video is kind of, it's uncommon for me to do, but I realized that maybe some people are curious. Well, actually, I do get a lot of um, questions about it. Uh, some people are curious about how I buy my tarot decks or what do I look for in a tarot deck or an oracle deck or what are, basically, what are the guidelines that I abide by when I purchase a tarot or oracle deck. Now, the first piece of advice that I can give you is actually to buy yourself a Rider Waite deck. If you are just starting out, if you're beginning your tarot reading journey, I suggest that you buy a Rider Waite deck. Now this is what a Rider Waite deck looks like, and I make pouches as well and I sell them. This is what a Rider Waite deck looks like. So you may be familiar with these. These are the standard um, or not really standard, but yeah, standard. And the most common decks or tarot cards, rather, that you see when you type in Google uh, tarot deck. And that is because it is the most widely used deck, and it is the deck by which almost majority of all um, tarot decks are based on. And so... The reason for this is the reason why I suggest purchasing this deck first is because the Rider Waite deck is pretty textbook. <clears throat> for those who are still on their intuitive journey, or rather for those who are still like kind of um, enhancing their intuition and still can't rely on their intuition or still aren't, um, I can't find the phrase for it, but who are still kind of like wishy-washy about how their intuition is when it comes to tarot reading, uh, you can go for the Rider Waite because everything in the Rider Waite deck has, a, um, it has an assigned meaning already. It has an assigned meaning. Every element in the Rider Waite deck has a meaning, and every thing in a card of all. This is me, by the way of all the other Rider Waite cards have, um, what do you call this? They have meaning and they have symbolism. So yeah, if you're just starting out and you're having a difficult time reading cards intuitively off the bat, start out with this because it is very textbook. Literally, it has a mini book that you can flip through and look for the meanings behind them. And so that's going to help you along. That was actually how I learned, by the way. My very first deck was actually the Zombie Tarot deck, which was gifted to me. But a cousin of mine told me that... A cousin of mine is a tarot reader as well. And he told me that it would be easier to start off with a Rider Waite. And so I did. I bought a Rider Waite. And he taught me the entire process of reading tarot cards via textbook. So he taught me all the symbolisms and all the stuff inside of it. And then after that, he told me to read cards intuitively. So that was how I learned. And now I read cards intuitively. But I still have the supporting textbook knowledge information of what the textbook meaning is from the Rider Waite. And you'll find that if you start with the Rider Waite, um, other, other tarot decks won't be as foreign to read or as unfamiliar to read as well because a lot of cards again are based on the symbolisms on the Rider Waite deck. All right. 
So that is one huge tip, actually. If you're starting out, start out, the easiest way to do that is to start out by using a Rider weight deck. And then after that, you're good to go. So think of the Rider weight as basically your native language. And then all the other decks are other foreign languages, which you have to learn, you have to um, really come into an understanding of after you've mastered your um, mother tongue. All right, so that's the first one. Buy yourself a Rider Waite deck. Be familiar with the Rider Waite deck and the textbook meaning of the tarot cards. And then that's when you go into the intuitive side of it. Because again, the cards, they do have a textbook meaning, but they will differ according to what the question is and according to what the answer is. All right, so yeah. First off, buy yourself a Rider Waite deck. Number two. Don't buy, um, well, not necessarily don't buy, but you don't have to spend expensively, extensively and expensively on uh, different kinds of tarot decks, you know. If a $2 deck resonates with you, then go with it. You don't need to buy the really expensive ones. I think the most expensive deck that I've ever seen was about $200. And it was because it was a limited edition and it was very rare. And of course, I didn't buy it. Um, I didn't have the budget for that deck um, particularly. And it didn't resonate with me particularly. So whatever the price range is, it's really... It doesn't contribute to how well you're going to understand the deck or not understand it, you know? So the price doesn't really matter. You don't have to buy expensive decks. At the same time, if you want to buy a mid-range deck or even an expensive deck that resonates with you really, really well, that's when you can discern. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy expensive decks if you resonate with them. I'm saying that you don't have to buy expensive decks just to buy an expensive deck, you know. But if they do resonate with you, then that's a whole thing altogether. So that's a number two. You don't have to spend so much on decks. Although, if you are a tarot reader, reader you'll know that decks are expensive. Rider weight alone is 900 pesos, which is a little short of $20. But here in the Philippines, um, 1,000 pesos is enough. It's a lot of money here in the Philippines. So yeah, that's a, it's a luxury item, so to speak. Okay, so the third one is research the deck. If there is a deck that really catches your eye or you hear of a deck from somewhere else and you, you're kind of curious about it, you know it's calling you, go ahead and research that deck. That is what I did with my, with the deck that is the love of my life deck. I call it the love of my life deck or my favorite deck ever, which is, oh, the Lion Strider. And apparently this one wants to be read. So this is for me, the world. Uh, beautiful possibilities all around. So this is my favorite deck of all time. This is the Lion Strider by Ciolo Thompson. And I find that this deck is pretty much me if I was a tarot deck. It is completely and utterly gorgeous, you know, breathtaking. The artwork is breathtaking and very straight to the point for me. But you'll be surprised that a lot of people don't resonate with this deck. They find it beautiful, no doubt about that, but they can't read it because it's very difficult for them to read. And for me, this is the easiest deck to read, even easier than the or than my oracle cards, which already have the meaning like <laughs> written on them. This is the easiest deck for me to read. So I came to that conclusion when I researched it all the more. That's a very important thing when it comes to um, tarot decks. Research what the artwork is. Re if you can, research what the entire deck looks like, if that's available. And that's the reason why I also do a flip through on my channel of different kinds of decks. I'll leave the link up here of the playlist of my flip throughs. But it's very important because you'll want to know if you're going to be able to read it or not. Because if you're not going to be able to read it and you plan to use it for reading, then you will have wasted your money and your time. So, and the tarot deck will be able to feel that as well. Tarot decks have feelings, guys. 
So yeah, this is my favorite, as you can tell. I mean, I keep holding it. The, and this deck has gone everywhere with me. It's gone to Malaysia. It's gone to Singapore, of course, in the Philippines. It's gone to um, Long Island. It's gone to New York, you know, all the different uh, USA, basically. Um, yeah, so this is my ride or die deck. And I only, um, I only came to that conclusion when I researched it. So do your research when it comes to decks. See if you'll be able to read them so that you can know if it's worth it to buy or not. Now, the fourth tip is to actually think about this. So think about the, the deck, the usability of it, so to speak. So let's say, for example, you've already done your research. You're, you've seen the the entire deck on YouTube, or maybe you've Googled it, you have you kind of more or less know what the theme is, what they look like. Um, now, have a think about the return of investment when it comes to that deck. Again, a lot of decks are mid-range. I don't think there are cheap decks. My, the, my cheapest deck, uh, and just in terms of price range, you know, the lo my deck which has the lowest price range was is the Biddy Tarot. I have the, the small Biddy Tarot deck, which is nine dollars, and it's very affordable, right? But some decks, um, let's take this for example. This is, oh, where's the price? It's somewhere here. I thought it was somewhere here. Uh, nope, there's no price there. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Let's look at another one. Nope, there's no price there either. But I remember, yeah, there's no price here. So anyway, but tarot decks cost a lot of money. They are an investment. And if you aren't, um, if you aren't careful, you could easily rip yourself off with a tarot deck. This is not to belittle any tarot deck, you know. But if it's not going to serve you for any reason, then why invest in it? right? So it's one thing to invest in a deck for the illustration purposes. There are collectors, and I myself collect. I do have decks which have beautiful artwork, but I don't use because I don't resonate with them um, so much as uh, my other decks. So in that case, they are a collector's item. They are um, a source of joy for me to look at. And that is an instant return of investment. But if you are going to buy an expensive deck, let's say, for example, that you don't really appreciate the, the art, you don't really understand the message, and you can't really use it for reading for yourself or other people, or even like a daily tarot post on Instagram or Facebook or maybe TikTok or other social media, then what is the purpose of buying it? Just to say that you have it? You know, just to say that I have so many tarot decks now, or I have 50 tarot decks, I have 60 tarot decks, you know? So really think about your return of investment. Does it um, make you happy? Does the deck make you happy? Does the artwork make you happy? Do Are you able to use your decks um, extensively? Do they serve a purpose for you, you know? So have a think about that after you've done your research. Anyway, you'll be able to know as soon as you go through all the um, all the artwork of the decks that you're researching. So that's number four. And number five is if there is a deck that really excites you off the bat, take it. Just just go for it, you know. Um, but this is pretty hit or miss. I warned, excuse me, I had a soda earlier and I burped a little bit. Apologies. So I have, this is very interesting because I have two case studies on this. So I have two decks here, which I both bought on a whim. This is the Wisdom of the Oracle. It's not a tarot deck, but it's an Oracle card. And I bought this on a whim and fully booked in Makati here in the Philippines. And I, for a while I did appreciate it, but I realized that right now I don't resonate with it because the artwork is actually very sad for me. I used to see it as light and airy, but now whenever I look at it, it's very sad. 
it's like it transformed right before my eyes. So I don't really use this much anymore, but I still keep it for posterity because it was the very first Oracle deck that I bought. And this was expensive. I think this was this was around 1,200, 1,300 pesos. Uh, 23, 24 dollars, I think. Yeah, in the Philippines, that's expensive. So it's again, it's a luxury item. So you have that. I bought it on a whim and now I don't use it anymore. And then I have this, which is the Affirmator's Tarot, which I use a lot and I love. I saw this in camp in New York and it was the only deck left. And at that time, I didn't even know that Knock Knock, which is their publishing I think that's a publication yeah yeah that knock knock had a tarot deck because I have the affirmators oracle cards the love one and the regular one and I didn't know that they had this I saw it it was the last thing on the shelf um on a cold winter's day December something December 17 I think uh, yes I remember this was last year I just bought this last year and I just, it excited me so much, so I just took it, and I didn't even research it. I just took it, I went to the counter, and the person at the counter asked me if I was a tarot reader, and I said yes, and I pulled a card for him. So, yeah, you have two very interesting case studies, so just know that if a deck really excites you, go ahead and buy it. But be forewarned that... It can go in two ways, and I have both. I have experienced both. So this one I bought on a whim. I do not use at all anymore. This one I bought on a whim, and I use very frequently. And also when I read for other people, I use very I use this very frequently as well. So just to give you guys a quick run through of all the tips that I've um, given you so far. So number one, buy yourself a Rider weight deck for easier understanding, and you know, like to get a baseline knowledge and textbook knowledge of tarot deck reading. Number two, don't you don't have to buy expensive decks. You, the price has nothing to do with whether you'll be able to understand it or not. Number three, research that deck. Know everything there is to know about that deck. Number four, think of the usability and the return of investment on that deck. And number five, if a deck excites you, just go for it. But be forewarned that it can go either way. All right? and. If a deck doesn't resonate with you, just an added bonus tip, like for me, this one, you can always change that through manifesting, right? So yeah, I hope this was helpful for anyone who wants to like have a simple guide on purchasing tarot decks. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or suggestions, you want to say, hey, comment down below. If you would like to receive notifications of my new videos, please hit the subscribe button over there. And if you like, if you would like your very own tarot reading or Reiki healing session with me online for now, here are the details. And I will see you guys next time. Stay happy, stay healthy, happy shopping for your decks, and ciao for now.